While the Philadelphia Eagles have had a uh, complicated history in the top half of the NFL draft when it comes to edge rushers and the selections they make, they don't always miss, but there's been some complicated ones, no doubt about it. I think where the Eagles have excelled is when they identify the free agents to bring along with some of their maybe day two and day three picks that pan out. I'm talking about a class of guys that includes, you know, young men like Hugh Douglas, Connor Barwin, Jason Babin, Javon Kurse, and most recently, Hassan Reddick. And that's what I want to look at today. I want to look at who might be some players that are not necessarily going to be, you know, the top, you know, 16. They're not in the top half of the first round, but might be some back end first rounds into day two selections that can come in as a rotational piece that towards the future, building towards the future, might eventually turn into a more of a main fixture for the organization. All right, guys, today's topic, I want to talk about edge rusher out of Iowa State, and some of your guys' personal favorite here, Will McDonald the fourth. Let's get it. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. So Will McDonald the fourth is a very interesting guy right from the jump because He's one of these dudes that you go in with a certain perception, a certain belief, but then you go into the underlying like analytics behind his play, and you're like, yeah, that's not exactly what I would have you know envisioned. I thought that this guy from being you know six four, six five ish, and you know roughly somewhere around two hundred and forty pounds, was more than likely playing a lot of overhang, right? He was more more than likely playing a lot of like the Hassan Reddick role. But the thing is, is like when you actually go in and you take a look and you you pay attention to the way that they were aligning him, he played with his hands in the dirt a lot more than people think. You know, sometimes he was right in above that, you know, as a five technique above that tackle. Sometimes he was playing a seven or a nine technique. But nonetheless, he played a lot with his hands in the dirt, which is something I did not envision, especially given his physical height. And then what I saw in terms of the underlying testing numbers, I was like, oh, like this is an interesting little wrinkle here. Like not what I perceived. It's definitely a little different than I thought, but nonetheless, like it, it shows you that you won't have to necessarily be fearful about putting his hands in the dirt on an occasion. Like when you finally go to that 40 front, that four man front where you're only rushing four, right? And you're in that 42, that four, two, five, the Eagles like to play sometimes on like second down. You don't have to fear that. You don't have to fear that outcome per se. All right, guys. So what was this testing numbers? Like what type of athlete are we looking at? We're looking at a four, seven, 40 guy. This is an important anomaly right here just to talk about and illustrate. Just because a guy runs something like a 4740, it doesn't mean what people think, right? If you're worried about a defensive lineman's flying 20, the back 20 guys, you don't know the sport, guys. You just don't. You, you need to update your education around the sport and how it's played at certain alignments and certain positions. Yeah, if you're talking about a wide receiver, the flying 20's got merit because you're worried about their ability to separate downfield. I ain't worried about this guy's ability to separate downfield. As a matter of fact, that would be horrible. <laughs> I don't want him playing above 20 yards. So this is what I like to look at when it comes to these defensive linemen. What was your 10 split? A 1-6-3. Solid 10 split. What was your 20 split? 2-6-5. Okay. Now tell me the most important data I think when it comes to edge rushers. I want to know the explosive traits. Okay, if I'm going to judge you as an athlete, I want to know your 10 split. I want to know your broad jump. I want to know your vertical. What were they? With this young man, you got a 1-6-3-10 split. You got a 132-inch broad jump. That's nuts. And then you got a 36-inch vertical. This guy's a pretty dang good athlete. I think he jumped 35 and a half at his pro day, 36 inches at the combine, something like that, guys. But nonetheless, like these are solid numbers. But then he backed it up at his pro day with lateral movement drills, showing you that, hey, man, as an overhang in like a true 30 front, 34 front, or in this like, you know, adaptation that you see the Eagles use a lot of, I can play in space. I had the data to back up being able to play in space, which is a 4-2-2 short shuttle, which they commonly refer to as the 5-10-5. And then he has a 6-8-5-3 cone. I, I mean, I'm intrigued by the young man. I don't know what his round evaluation is going to be. I, I got a feeling he's probably going to be somewhere in that second round value. But if you're the Eagles and you're picking at 30 and you're going to stay at 30, you might have to consider it. If you're the Eagles and you're sitting there at 62 and a guy like Will McDonald comes rolling down your board and you haven't taken an edge rusher yet, I think you got to consider that there. If you trade backwards from 30 and you're acquiring more picks, something that a lot of people have theorized with the Philadelphia Eagles, I think you consider a pick like this. I think that he is one of these guys that he's, he's interesting, right? Because if you go and you filter by 
pass rush grade. And then you also filter by 20% minimum month snaps and then filter it by only those who are eligible for the 2023 draft. He ranks 17th out of all the names that are going to pop up there from edge rushers. Okay. He has an 84.2 grading. Grades are subjective. They're impartial, but they are very subjective. And there are times that I greatly disagree with them on things. Now I'll give you some of the names that are ahead of him in terms of the grading. Carl Brooks, I got a video on Carl Brooks, guys, that I'll link at the end of this video if you want to catch up on Carl Brooks. He's an interesting, unique dude. He's a 300-pound guy who plays as an overhang at times. He, Carl Brooks, is he's very unique. He's not normal. <laughs> uh, Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin, of course, and then Will Anderson Jr. all kind of ranked above him in the grading. What I will say is you break it down by pressures. He's got 25 pressures, which ranks 73rd out of all these draft-eligible guys. He had six sacks and three quarterback hits. So he had nine, what I would call the most important, right? I mean, knocking a dude off his spot, of course, is important. But physically getting there and either putting the guy on his back as a sack or hitting him and, and shaking him up, I think, is way more important. Of course, without penalty. We don't want the Derek Barnett model. All right. Nine out of 25 is a 36% flow through right here in terms of like being able to physically, physically being the keyword, impact the quarterback. So I do think there's something here. And then when you look at his win rate, which is the ability when you're lined up against a guy, can you beat him? Can you beat him and can you be impactful? He's got a 16.8% win rate, which if you rank it inside of this class, is 38th. I don't think that he's the analytical gift of, of this edge rushing class, right? I don't think he's that type of player. But what I think he is is a dude that's a complicated study because you go in thinking one thing, and then you dive down into the analytics in the film and you see like, oh no, like he was played a lot different at Iowa State than I think a lot of people are assuming. But you also see the prospect for a lot of upside here, right? He's a six foot four, 240 pound, 34.875 inch arm reach in a nine and a half inch, you know, hand size. Okay. He doesn't necessarily have smaller hands and he's got a massive arm reach. Okay. He's, he's definitely what I think, what I think, and I don't know if it'll be true, but I do think that Sean Desai seems to just judging what he had out there in Chicago. I think his edges, I do think he wants some length from those guys, right? I think he wants more of the Josh Wett lengthy kind of athletes there. But he still wants athletes like Josh Wett. Josh Wett's an anomaly. I get it, guys. You can't go into every draft class, class expecting that you're pulling that kind of dude out. I, I completely understand that. But I'm just saying I think that's the type of dude he wants. Now, does, does that preclude the Eagles from, or does that stop the Eagles from taking a dude like Nolan Smith who's got shorter arms? No, because Nolan Smith, I think that you can make other analytically based arguments and then actual like film study arguments to say, man, that dude's first step is unlike anything else that you see in this draft class. Like, you know, but I, I do think that you're going to see an internal debate here. I do think you're going to see like, you know, the Eagles have historically been speaking, they have not been afraid to go with shorter arm players on the defensive line. You know, Brandon Graham. I mean, if you go to any of these really most recently signed or drafted players on the Eagles defensive front, you don't get a lot of dudes over 33 inches in the arm reach, just to be real. Josh Sweat is kind of the, the lone hold down for the most part, right? Now in the interior, you do get guys like Fletch, of course. But they showed you with Milton Williams, they're not scared to take a dude that has shorter arms, and most teams feel is a complicated evaluation because of that, and they're inside. You just have to kind of like, these are the type of things that where sometimes it's best just to observe and then make an you know analysis after these things come out. Then you can kind of break down like, huh, as it turns out, this is what they did. Will McDonald would be a case for the Josh Sweat, lengthy, rangy type of guy. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all's time and attention. I know a lot of y'all were Will McDonald fans. Hopefully I did y'all justice here. Uh, leave your comments down below, guys, and I'll catch y'all on the next video.